This is a five-minute film about the origin of eukaryotes. Though many different theories have been proposed to account for eukaryote origin, the simplest one, in physiological terms, invokes anaerobic syntrophy. In the example shown, the mitochondrial ancestor, shown in blue, is a facultative anaerobe and produces molecular hydrogen as a fermentation end product, which the host avidly consumes. Note the outer membrane vesicles, small blue spheres, being produced by the mitochondrial ancestor. When it becomes an endosymbiont within the archaeal host, vesicles of bacterial lipids fuse with the host's plasma membrane, giving it a mixed lipid composition. The endosymbiont can divide. Occasional endosymbiont lysis results in bacterial chromosomes in the host cytosol, gene transfer from endosymbiont to host, and genome chimerism. Gene transfer can occur over multiple rounds and carries some fateful hitchhikers, which become visible as we zoom in. Group 2 introns. Shown here in yellow. Group 2 introns occur in many bacteria, including the ancestors of mitochondria. They're self-splicing. That is, they remove themselves from the mRNA via a single round of translation. Once removed, they can reinsert into a new location and thereby proliferate in the host's genome. Group 2 introns do not impair gene expression in prokaryotes because ribosomes are active on nascent transcripts to remove the newly inserted group 2 introns. However, group 2 introns are the evolutionary precursors of the spliceosomal introns found in eukaryotes. In the evolutionary transition from group 2 to spliceosomal introns, group 2 introns underwent fragmentation into shorter spliceosomal introns whose removal required activities in trans provided by intron-derived RNA components in the spliceosome, shown here in green. The transition to spliceosomal splicing creates a severe problem though, because spliceosomes are slow on the order of minutes per intron, while ribosomes are fast on the order of 10 peptide bonds per second. The result is that the transition to spliceosomal introns inhibits gene expression at many loci simultaneously. Impaired gene expression at many loci in the nascent eukaryote effectively dooms it to extinction, unless a solution is found to the splicing problem. One solution would have been to delete all introns, which, however, did not occur because spliceosomal introns were present in the eukaryote common ancestor. An alternative solution would be the physical separation of splicing from translation. Separation in cells usually means membranes, and here the membrane vesicles produced by the symbiont can serve a very important function. Exclusion of active ribosomes from the chromosomes via a novel membrane. The nuclear membrane allows the slow process of splicing to go to completion in the absence of active ribosomes, so that the fast process of translation can be performed on intron-free mRNA in the cytosol. This generates nuclear cytosol compartmentation in the ancestral eukaryote. The evolutionary novelty that it affords the new lineage is a cytosol that is free of active chromatin a dedicated translational compartment where the world of eukaryote-specific structural proteins and protein-protein interactions can unfold. But by sequestration of chromosomes in the nucleus, they are no longer attached to the host cell wall, so they cannot be separated and apportioned to daughter cells by the normal means. If metabolism is running, DNA will just continue to replicate, yet without chromosome division. That looks like a dead end, but thanks to mitochondrial power, the cell can now synthesize very large amounts of protein in the novel cytosol. This marks the advent of eukaryotic microtubules and microtubule-dependent chromosome segregation onto daughter cells. At this point, the cell has no ready means to determine whether daughter cells receive a complete copy of the genetic information or not. Here, a curious property of archaeal cells comes into play. They can fuse. Fusion creates new combinations of chromosomes. When these are divided once again, ploidy is reduced. Recombination and ploidy reduction are the hallmarks of meiosis, one of the most conserved features of eukaryotic cells. Bypassing recombination yields mitosis, the standard form of eukaryotic cell division. The result of our endeavor is a nucleus-bearing cell that can undergo meiosis and mitosis, and mitochondria made it possible.